Hey guys, it's Sarah and today we are talking all about blush. I love blush so much and I wanted to hop on the kind of blush tag that's been going around. Um, I think Jessica Braun was the first one to do it and she was inspired by the eyeshadow palette tag that was started by Samantha March and Ali Glines. And since then a bunch of other people have done it, I've seen Kelly Gooch do it, Michelle Wong, Lots of people have hopped on board and I thought I would go ahead and do my version. So uh, basically it's just a bunch of questions. It's almost, I, I kind of think of it as um, like blush superlatives. You know in high school when there would be like the superlative awards at the end of the year where it would be like most likely to succeed or most athletic or whatever. It's kind of like that. So we have like most used blush, most expensive, underrated, most nostalgic, all of that. All kinds of different things and yeah let's just go ahead and get into it I'm excited to talk blush today I think that there were 12 questions in Jessica's version I did remove two of those just because I didn't really have anything that went with them yeah I have 10 questions today so let's go ahead and get into it first question is most used slash everyday blush that would have to be the clove and hallow hydra tint serum blush I have the shade blossom I love this blush I've talked it to death but it is just such an effortless blush. I can get messy with it. I can put it all over the place and I don't have to worry about it looking blotchy or too dark or anything. So I know the shade would be way too light for a lot of people. They do have some deeper shades in their line as well, but the formula is outstanding. It's kind of a gel liquid sort of blush. It's a serum blush um, and I just absolutely love it. You can apply it with your fingers, a sponge, a brush, whatever, and it works great. It's foolproof. Now, Currently my most used blush is the one that's in my project pan, but I wanted to kind of think about like in a bigger picture sense when I'm not panning a specific blush which one is my most used and it's definitely this one and I still use it all the time even when I am panning another blush. So next we have most expensive and I don't even know if you can purchase this anymore but this is from the brand Terramare and it's their mineral blush in rosy. I think this is like $38 um, and I think I think it's discontinued. I don't know. The last few times I've tried to link it, I haven't been able to find it. Kind of a lesser known brand. Honestly, a lot of their products have been a little underwhelming to me, but I do really, really like this blush. Um, it's just kind of a neutral, rosy pink. But because it is a loose blush, I, I just don't reach for it all that often, but I really should because when I do, I'm, I'm, I love it. So this is a brand that used to go on Hot Look a lot, and that was when I bought it, and it was on sale for like half off or something, so... Yeah, not necessarily worth the price, but that is my most expensive blush. So the opposite of that is most affordable, and I think my most affordable blush is actually my Wet n Wild Color Icon blush in Rosé Champagne. I think they may have discontinued this shade. Um, Wet n Wild is, um, there's been a lot of debate on their cruelty-free status. I don't really purchase from the brand anymore. This is actually the blush that's in my project pan right now. And despite all that, I have to say I do really, really love this blush. It's kind of a dusty peach is how I would describe it. This is what I'm wearing today. I just dust it all over my cheeks, my forehead, bridge of my nose, and it almost performs like a bronzer. I've kind of used blush in the way that a lot of people use bronzer, and this one works perfectly for that because it is a little bit of a bronzier blush. Um, and I think that this one is $2.99. I do have some $3 blushes in my collection as well, but I think this one is the only one that's $2.99. So next we have Worth the Hype, and that one would go to my Flower Blush Balm. I have the shade Pinched. It was actually Jessica Braun that made me buy this because she's been raving about this for a long time, and lots of other people love this blush. I don't know if it's been getting quite as much hype recently, but overall, across the board, this is a very, very well-loved blush. This is kind of a gel type of formula and because of that I just again similar to the Clove and Hallow blush I think of these as having kind of a similar formula. It just looks so healthy. There's no shimmer or anything in it but it just has this beautiful juicy look that it gives your cheeks and I absolutely love it. Great like spring and summer blush because this is kind of a peachier shade. Number five is favorite blush from a favorite brand and so one of my favorite brands if not my favorite brand is of course e.l.f. I've uh, been a huge fan of them for years and years, but my favorite from them is their bite-sized cheek duo in Cantaloupe. How cute is this blush shade? I just love this pastel 
orangey color. Cantaloupe is the perfect name for it because it really does look like the color of a cantaloupe. And a lot of orangey blushes can look kind of rough on me, but this, it just looks so good because it is such a light color. Again, this would be way too light for a lot of people. Um, but I also really like this shade, what is it called? Lychee. Um, it's a little bit of a deeper berry color, but this one is my favorite from e.l.f just because it's such a fun, unique color. Okay, next question is the newest blush. And for me, that is the Annabelle Perfect Cream Blush in the shade Subtle Coral. Annabelle is a Canadian brand, and this was sent to me by my friend Jess for a swap that we did. This has definitely got me wanting to try more from the brand Annabelle. The packaging is super cute. It is a very creamy, easy to blend formula. The color is super pretty. I can see myself wearing this a ton in the summer just because it's so bright and pretty um, but even though it's bright it's not too it doesn't look like too much on my cheeks you know yeah loving that one definitely recommend it if you are able to get this brand my oldest blush is by far the Milani powder blush in romantic rose I have had this since 2015 I remember buying this on Emily Noel's recommendation this was actually in my project pan earlier this year and I <laughs> Didn't even come close to finishing up, but I did hit pan on it. It's actually hollow on the inside. Not only is this my oldest blush, but this also comes with the most product of any blush that I own at 17 grams or 0.6 ounces. And just for some context, um, the Tear Mare blush, which is the loose blush, is 9 grams, so a little more than half of this. Um, this e.l.f. duo is... 4.6 grams, but it has two different pans in it. Um, the Wet n Wild blush is 5.85 grams. So you can see that 17 grams is absolutely massive. <laughs> so great bang for your buck. Also just a beautiful dusty rose. I've also heard that it's a dupe for one of the Tarte Amazonian clay blushes. Is it the shade Party? Is that the one? I don't know. Great blush. Excellent value as well. And even though I've had it for five years, probably five and a half years now, it hasn't gone bad. I mean, it is a powder product. Powder products can last a while. Okay, so number eight is going to be most underrated, and that would have to go to my River Organics Pinch Cheek Color. Very much a small business indie brand. Um, they are based, I think, in North Carolina, which is actually where I was born. Little known fact about me. Lovely neutral mauve color. Really, really nice formula. I, I do always point out that it is kind of a stiff formula, so you do kind of have to warm it up on your fingers, and I always just apply it with my fingers. But once you've warmed it up, it goes on beautifully. It's subtle, but it is lovely, and I love that it is in completely paper packaging, so it's plastic free and you can recycle the packaging once you're done with it. Number nine is most nostalgic or kind of like the most old school beauty YouTube vibes kind of product. <laughs> and so that would have to go to the CoverGirl Cheekers blush. I think this is the same one that Kelly said in her video as well. Um, I have the shade Natural Twinkle. For the longest time I didn't even like this blush very much. It was very sheer. It was just underwhelming. But the more I've used it, the more I love it. And it's, I think, such a great kind of winter shade. It does have some shimmer in it. So if you don't like that, you probably wouldn't, wouldn't like this blush. But I'm not sure how other shades of this formula perform, but this one for me is perfect because it's, it doesn't ever look overdone. I don't ever have to worry about applying too much. I can kind of just pile it on, which is what I love doing anyway. And uh, it always looks flattering. So I love this as like a fall and winter shade. I just think it's perfect. And I remember the reason why for me this is so nostalgic is this was the first blush I ever owned in high school. I had a peach color. They probably still sell it and I really should repurchase it once I've used up some other blushes, but I think it was peach. It was something with peach in the name and it was a very peachy matte blush and I used that whole thing up like to the last drop. So to me, it's very nostalgic. This is like, I feel like this was everybody's first blush because this blush has been around for years and years. And number 10 is most disappointing. And I actually decluttered this blush a little while ago because it was disappointing to me. <laughs> so it was a very, very hyped up formula. This could also go under not worth the hype. In Jessica's video, she did a not worth the hype and a most disappointing. I'm kind of combining those two in one because this is a very hyped up blush, but it was also the most disappointing. So we're just going to combine those two together. 
and that would be the e.l.f. primer infused blush specifically in the shade always hazy i haven't tried any of the other shades so i can't speak for those but <sighs> something about that blush it looked like such a beautiful shade in the pan and it didn't look like it would be too dark for me or anything but it was just so unbelievably pigmented and it would always just look kind of muddy on my cheeks and it could have just been that the shade was just not a good one for my skin tone. I also felt like it was kind of patchy though and again that could have just been a shade thing but I feel like I've used other kind of deeper blushes in the past that maybe were too dark for me but that weren't patchy and weird looking on my cheeks so I don't know that one was kind of it was kind of weird. I, I really liked it in theory and it felt very smooth and buttery and it swatched beautifully but it just didn't work on my cheeks so I'm, I'm a little hesitant to try other shades. I know people love that blush formula and the primer infused bronzer formula but I don't know. That concludes the blush tag. This was so much fun. Blush is one of my favorite steps of my makeup routine, if not my favorite. Pretty much gave you a nice overview of my blush collection. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see my eyeshadow palette tag that I did a few months ago, I'll link that below. It was very similar questions to this, and that again was started by Samantha March and Allie Glines. But I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'd love to see you again soon, and hopefully I will talk to you in my next video. Bye.